Newsletters are very useful in gaining attention from prospects or to maintain ongoing connections with contacts and existing customers. HubSpot is a great tool that offers a full platform of marketing, sales, and allows you to connect and maintain contact with persons that have subscribed to your newsletter. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use a custom React form and connect that with HubSpot so that you can manage the persons that have subscribed to your newsletter as well as send out emails and keep in contact with them. Let's get started. Initially, I used HubSpot's form script and added it to my website. However, it did not match the design and flow that I was going for. I then decided to create a custom form in my Gatsby blog and connect it to HubSpot. The first thing that you need to do is to create a free HubSpot account. Then you're going to navigate to marketing and select forms. In the upper right, click create form and then choose the form type as embedded form. Enter the form details that you want to collect and ensure that you make a note of the contact property. After entering the fields that you want, click publish. You should then see a pop-up saying that your form was published. Click on embed code and make note of the portal ID and the form ID. You will need these two things in order to send the data that you have collected in your form to HubSpot. The first thing that we're going to do is to get the Gatsby starter blog. Ensure that you have installed the Gatsby CLI by running the command npm install minus g Gatsby hyphen CLI. This will allow you to run the Gatsby develop command that will launch your blog that you have just pulled down in your local host. It also allows you to do other commands such as Gatsby clean and Gatsby build. Gatsby build does certain production steps that the Gatsby develop command does not do. So if it is you want to ensure that your blog won't break once you have deployed it to production, you can run the Gatsby build command before you deploy. If we open our local host, we will see the Gatsby starter blog that we pulled down and it will contain some fake posts. We are going to be putting our subscribe button at the top of our blog post. And we're going to start by adding our subscribe component in our index page. So we import the subscribe and then we add it in our return statement. Then we are going to import React and use state. Let us create our subscribe component with two states, a name state and an email state. This will help us keep track of the information that has been entered in the form. We're then going to create a form and on submit, it is going to call the function handle submit. We're going to create a label called full name with an input. The value of that input field is going to be our name state. On change, we're going to update our name state with what the user has entered. We're also going to create an email input field with a label and it's going to do the same thing but with the email and the set email. We're then going to create our handle submit function. The prevent default method tells the user agent that if the event is not explicitly handled, its default action should not be taken as it normally would be. If we take a look at our blog so far, we'll see the full name and email fields. We are going to add in a header that says subscribe to newsletter. If we go to developers.hubspot.com, we will see some instructions on how to send form data to HubSpot. That is what we are going to be implementing now. 
So we create our variable for our XML HTTPS request and we enter our URL. Our URL will contain the portal ID and the form ID. And then we're going to have our data. So we're going to create an array that will contain a name and a value. For the first one is going to be the email name and the value is going to be the email state. And we're going to duplicate that and do the same thing. If you recall, when we were creating our form, we had used a first name field. So even though on our page we are saying full name, the contact value that is in HubSpot is first name. And so that is the name that we have to use to pass in our data. We are then going to add in some context such as a page URI and a page name. And HubSpot will use this to figure out where your information is coming from. Then we are going to stringify the data. We are then going to use our XML HTTP request to pass in the data to HubSpot. So we're going to do a post and we're going to set our request header to content type application JSON. On a ready state change, we're going to create a function and in that function, we're going to have some if statements. If the status is 200, that means the response was successful and we're going to just alert out that response text. We're going to do the same thing for status 403 as well as status 404. Then we are going to say xhr.send and we're going to pass in the data. So if you go to Google and you search for xhr and go to xhr objects, you will be able to see the different commands that we have been using in the project so far. So on ready state change and response text. And you can use this to read up some more to understand the commands that we have been using. And so if we now go to our Gatsby blog and we enter our full name and our email, click the submit button, you will see a success alert. If you go to your contacts in HubSpot, you will see that a new contact has been created. However, if you get an error, ensure that you have changed the portal and the form ID in the URL in our handle submit function. The link to the blog and the repository will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.